Welcome to How to Book That, I'm Anne Ridden and you asked for some more debunking of viral videos. So here we go. Blossom put out a video where a lady literally throws her dinner on the floor. I'm not quite buying into the storyline here. I don't understand why she did that. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, the solution is, according to Blossom, to spray shaving cream all over the top, wait for 15 minutes, and then when you wipe away the shaving cream, magically you have clean carpet. And so usually, as you know, I would try this out. But in an interesting turn of events, 5 Minute Crafts has tried it out for me. They put out a video that says, we tested viral internet hacks. And they tested this one in particular. And you can see it's shot by shot in a very similar style, but instead of showing the perfectly clean carpet at the end, it says, it doesn't work. So I think we've actually had progress there. We've made debunking trend to the point that now we've got content farms debunking content farms, which I think is progress. Corey B has a prank channel. He obviously didn't see the five minute crafts one. He just saw the blossom one and thought that this would work. So he pranked his girlfriend by pouring some tomato pasta sauce on their new rug thinking he could then just put shaving cream on it and it's all gonna come off all fine. And as you can see, the results were not as he expected. <laughs> oh! Uh, what stop. do you know? Just wait. Well, just... what do you know? No, no. What do you know? It didn't no. come out. I knew it, it was a prank. It's not a prank. It's not a prank. It said that it would work. I wonder if he can bill them for a new rug. Probably not. Blossom also put up a video where they showed a lady ironing her shirt and then a guy came and handed her a shirt to iron and she said she didn't have time. At this point, I don't know why he didn't just iron the shirt himself, but anyway, that's another point. She then takes both shirts and puts them in the bathroom while she's having a shower so that they can steam. And once she's finished having a shower, both shirts are miraculously crease free, looking perfect, and the shirt behind has morphed into a completely different shirt, which is pretty powerful steam. That'd be great. Want a whole new wardrobe? Just have a shower, hang your clothes there, you get a new shirt. Who knows what you'll get? <laughs> anyway, Five Minute Crafts has again decided to debunk this. Not the different shirt bit, I don't think they noticed that when they watched it, but the steam bit. So they have done a video as well showing a lady getting into the shower and saying after, nope, it still has creases in it, so it didn't work. And the question is, can we now trust Five Minute Crafts? Well, for someone to be trustworthy, they have to show the truth and they have to do that all the time so you know you can trust them, not just some of the time. So I'm hoping they've turned over a new leaf. We'll look at a few more of their videos and see how we go. Another one in this debunking trend, we've got Blossom showing adding soda to wilted flowers and apparently the sugar in the soda is supposed to refresh the flowers and make them look good again, it revives them. Now, Five Minute Crafts has tested this theory. They've got some roses and then they've added the soda to it and then added a clock there so it looks like they've done a time lapse and then said, this doesn't work. Now, I'm not sure if I quite believe either of them here because I don't think either of them are telling the full story. I'm not an expert in flowers and roses so I can't predict what's gonna happen but I am actually gonna do my own time lapse. The reason I don't trust the Five Minute Crafts one either is they've got the clock there going around but there's no change. There's no movement to the flowers whatsoever and in a time lapse, I'd expect something to happen. Like even if they wilted more, you'd expect some change in the flowers. So we're gonna test this one out ourselves. Firstly, I'm gonna put some roses into a couple of glasses with no water, because that's the quickest way to get them to wilt, is not give them any liquid at all. Now, eight hours later, we have some wilted ones, some that still look okay, and note that we are talking about wilted flowers here, not dead ones. If they're dead, nothing's gonna fix them. I'm going to choose a couple of the more wilted ones and put them into the water, Sprite, Coke, and Powerade. And now we can watch what happens over the next four hours. They all wilted even more. Now at this point I stopped the time lapse and thought perhaps that the ends of the stems might have dried out while I had no water and so now the liquid can't get into the stems. So I chopped off a good chunk off the bottom of each of the roses in all of the different liquids and then put them on to film again. 
the roses in water were good again in just 20 minutes. That was such a fast turnaround. Powerade was not far behind. Sprite did eventually work, but it took 10 hours to do what the water did in 10 minutes. So if you've got wilted roses, just chop some off the bottom of the stem and give them some fresh water and leave them for about 20 minutes and they should revive. Don't bother with the Sprite, you're wasting your time and your money doing that. Now I did also add another fresh rose to each one, one that hadn't been wilted, and I'm gonna leave those for the next week or so so I can see what happens. Do they last better in any particular one? And I'll put the results of that up on my Patreon page. Now let's look at a couple more five minute crafts videos. They've got a recipe here for Skittles popcorn. So they take some oil and they pour it into the pan and then they add Skittles and popcorn kernels. And when they pop, you get this colorful Skittle popcorn. Now, this wouldn't work. I can tell you it wouldn't work just by looking at it because the Skittles are gonna burn before the popcorn pops. So that's number one reason it's not gonna work. But even beyond that, you can tell that this is faked. The reason being, number one, if you look at it when the kernels are popping, they're white. You've got white popcorn and then in the end you've got colored. And number two, when you look at the colors of popcorn, they're very different to the colors of Skittles that went in in the beginning. We've got yellow Skittles and yellow popcorn, which is great, and we've got pink and pink, but what happened to the green and dark purple? Somehow did they combine to make blue? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna test this one for you to show you what would actually happen if you try and make it using this method. Now it's popping and lots of them are still popping, but I can smell smoke already, so I'm gonna to have to turn this off. And as expected, the sugar in the Skittles has burnt to give us burnt Skittle popcorn. Even one of the least black ones still tastes burnt and it certainly doesn't look colorful. So I think what's happened here is they've just missed a couple of steps in the how-to tutorial, which if you add them in, it's gonna work really well. So let me show you what it should look like. Seriously though, if you did want Skittles popcorn and you're disappointed that this won't work, there are recipes on YouTube that have been uploaded more than five years ago. Just add some butter into a pan with some corn syrup or glucose syrup and then add Skittles of all one color or colors that will go together. I don't have enough Skittles to do all one color. And then heat that up until they're completely melted. You'll need to stir that while it's heating and then add in three cups of popcorn and stir that until that super hot sugary syrup is completely coating all of the popcorn. Tip that onto a baking tray and bake it in the oven for 10 minutes to dry it out and then let that cool and repeat that for every color that you want. Personally, they seemed a bit greasy to me and I'd rather eat the popcorn and the Skittles separately. I did have this bowl sitting on the bench all afternoon after the kids got home from school and they all tried it, but nobody finished off the bowl. So to me, that's evidence that this is not a great recipe. They don't taste great. If it had been a bowl of Skittles and bowl of popcorn, guaranteed, both would have been finished. So give it a try if you're desperate for Skittles popcorn, otherwise eat them separately. They work better that way in my opinion. Moving on to the next one grate some biscuits and put some baking paper across a slow cooker, then press down the biscuits and add cheesecake batter and the lid. Let it cook and then look at that, a perfect baked cheesecake with no cracks. Now they don't actually give their recipe there for baked cheesecake, but that's not really an issue to me. I have a great recipe for a baked cheesecake which never cracks for me every time I use it. Personally, I think the key to it not cracking is using the right recipe rather than the method they're using there in the slow cooker. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'll use my recipe and I'll link to that below. So if you wanna make a baked cheesecake, you can, but I'm gonna use their method of cooking it in the slow cooker. Now, I know you can cook cheesecakes in the slow cooker, but I just have never seen anyone do it 
in the slow cooker, in the actual container. Usually it's done in a separate pan, like a cake pan, that you slot in on top of a grill in the slow cooker. The reason that I think this one needs debunking is because if you watch it, they put the batter in, the cheesecake batter, and if we freeze frame on that, and then look at it once it's cooked, it appears to have shrunk to a smaller size cheesecake. Now, I know they shrink a little bit when you chill them, but not that much. And that allows them just to lift it up easily and put it onto a plate. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna get stuck, so we're gonna give it a go. Grate up some biscuits. Put some baking paper across the slow cooker. Tip those biscuits in and press them down to make the base. Add the cheesecake batter and smooth that out. And then add the lid. Now that should bake fine in my slow cooker. I'm gonna set it to 90 degrees centigrade or 195 degrees F for two hours. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna make another baked cheesecake in the traditional way with the exact same recipe. I made double the recipes, so I've got the mixture there. And just put that into a spring form tin in a water bath in the oven. You can see on the slow cooker one, there's condensation forming on the top, which will eventually drip down onto the cheesecake, which will make the top not look very nice. So to stop that from happening, I'm gonna put a sheet of paper towel underneath just to catch the drips. Now I know they didn't do this, but I wanna give the cheesecake the best chance it has of working out. After two hours, I'm just gonna check the temperature in the center of the cheesecake. Most recipes will tell you 65 degrees C or 150 F in the center is good, but I like to make sure it's at 74 degrees C or 165 F to make sure the eggs in it are really well cooked. Okay, now that's done. And in the video, they just lifted it straight out of the slow cooker after they took the lid off and the steam came out while it was hot. But baked cheesecakes are very, very soft when they're hot and this is not gonna come out like that. So to give it its best chance, I'm gonna refrigerate it for 24 hours so it can firm up. Now, as you can see, it's still very close to the edges of the slow cooker. It doesn't magically shrink when you cook a baked cheesecake. Okay, let me try again. Now, if they'd actually lined the base with a circle of baking paper and put another one sort of, of these crisscrossed, so you've got another handle and get someone else to help you, you might be able to get it out, but it's definitely not gonna come out like this. It's such a pity. I'm just gonna have to go for it, aren't I? Oh, definitely not as promised. Let me just get the rest out and I'll do the best I can to do a bit of a repair job and push that back together. It's not pretty, but it does still taste good. It's super soft and creamy. The one baked in the oven has a slightly firmer texture and a little bit of colouring on top and of course it has no cracks and looks much more beautiful. You can actually make a crack free perfect baked cheesecake in the slow cooker, just not using the method they showed, which is a pity because surely they must have had trouble getting it out, which is why they've swapped out for a different cheesecake but they could have just corrected the method and then it actually would have been a good hack that you could have done. Okay, let's move on to something savory now. Next, we're moving on to noodles. So they say what we're gonna need is some flour and an egg, actually five eggs, and then whisk that together and tip it into a bag, poke holes into it, let it pour into a pan of boiling water, I assume, and you get Egg noodles. <laughs> now before I test this, let me know in the poll that I'm gonna put on this video whether you think this would work or not. Do you think that this will make noodles? Yes or no, and then I'll test it out and we can see what happens. Okay, let's start with some flour and an egg. I've never cracked eggs with a knife before. This is a really weird way of doing it. Add four more and then whisk that all together really well so there are no lumps in it and then tip that into a Ziploc bag, seal it up, and now let's poke some holes in this thing. Let it drip down into the boiling water and you get soggy, eggy stuff that looks nothing like noodles. If you want to make noodles at home, you can do that. There are a couple of options. One's a bit easier than the other. The first one is this way. Many of you would be familiar with this way of making noodles and it gives you noodles that have that really recognizable wavy kink in them. Which one would you rather eat? Two minute noodles or five minute craft noodles? Should I get Dave to taste these? Yes, I should. 
It certainly looks uh, not very appetizing, a little bit like uh, baby food, and uh, uh, smells super eggy. I'm not excited. It's just super weird. It's like the consistency of mush, but it tastes sort of like pasta. And I'm pretty sure I never want to have that again. Some of you have said in the comments that Dave needs his own union so that he doesn't have to taste bad food anymore. He did get to eat the baked cheesecake as well. I just didn't film that. So I think he's doing okay. <laughs> The second way you can make noodles if you really want to make your own noodles at home and it's fairly easy is get two cups of flour and then add in two eggs and mix that together and you'll need to add enough water to make it able to form a dough. So about a quarter of a cup of water should do it there. Knead that until it's smooth and then roll it out really, really thin and run it through a pasta machine and you can get great thin homemade noodles. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can roll it thin using a rolling pin and then use a knife to cut it and then instantly unravel those noodles before they stick together. They won't be as even or as fine if you do it using a knife, but they'll still taste the same. Boil them up and you have some fresh homemade noodles. And now we have a totally different channel to look at. This one has a video called Cool Food Tricks and DIY Hacks because there's not enough of those on the internet already. We literally have a lady throwing her food on the floor. Again, what is it with these channels? That seems to be a definite problem. That doesn't happen at our house. We don't just throw our dinner on the floor, but acting is amazing. Let's fast forward and see what her ingenious solution is. So she's got a toilet lid and she's made it into a table that is more wobbly than the plate was when it was on her knee. Who has an unused toilet lid in their house? Or two of them, two unused toilet lids. I actually showed this video to my youngest and he said, that would really hurt your neck. I hadn't thought of that, but I thought that was true. And then he said, why don't you just put a book on your lap under your dinner? You heard it. Now, I don't think that one needs any testing. I'm not actually going to do it. If, if my year three can figure out that it's a bad idea, I think I don't need to test it. Let's have a look at this one, which I am also telling you in advance, I am not testing this either. So she's chopping onions and it makes her eyes water. We can all relate to that. So her solution is to wrap three layers of plastic wrap around her face. Now that's just dangerous and, and not a good idea at all, obviously. And when they were editing, they felt the need to add, do not try this at home. Perhaps when they were editing, they could have just gone, let's cut that one out. It's dangerous and not a good thing to put on the internet. Clearly it passed their standards and they thought it was a good idea. Now, some of you have also been sending me the TikTok videos of people putting strawberries in salt water and then being disgusted or amazed at the bugs that come out of their strawberries. I didn't really think this one needed debunking, rather it probably needed confirming. Strawberries grow outside. All berries grow outside on plants. And yes, there are bugs and little spiders and dirt. You would expect that to be on your fruit and veggies. And that's why you wash them before you eat them. So usually they're not inside. And if they are inside, you're going to see some evidence of that. It's going to look a bit rotten on the outside. Usually you've just got some bugs on the very outside. So I've got two punnets of strawberries here. You don't need to use salt water. You can just use normal water. But for the purpose of cynics, I'm going to add salt to my water and then tip in my two punnets of strawberries. Now you can see sitting on the outside of the strawberry when it was tipped in, you could already see this before it went in the water, there's a dead slug on that strawberry. Slugs like to eat strawberries, they think they're yummy just like we do. So strawberry farmers, even organic growers, use slug baits to try and control them. Apart from that, there was only one tiny spider which would have washed off with the water anyway. Strawberries are good for you, so don't stop eating them, just wash them, and eat them. Yes, there might be some bugs or some dirt on all your fruit and veg, but it is the best food. You should definitely eat as much of it as you possibly can. If you see a video that you would like me to investigate further or debunk for you, please do tweet it to me, email me the link so that I can watch the video. 
Thank you to all my subscribers who have been doing that and a special shout out and thank you to my patrons for all of your support. I am truly humbled and very, very grateful for your support of this channel. I really, really appreciate it. Make it a great week and I'll see you all on Friday. Oh, and watch some more videos, of course. <laughs>